Hi everybody, we're back at Marty's Market. This is the Integrated Medicine Professionals Meetup for August. And I'm here with Lindsay Smith, the I'm, I'm, I'm always going to say it wrong. It's the food mood girl, yes. not the mood food girl. Yeah, the food, you can say it either way, but it's the food mood girl. Okay, yeah. it's the food mood girl. And that's your one of your websites, food mood girl. Yes. And you're about to start your own uh, YouTube channel, you told me. Yes. That's great. Yeah. A lot of things up and coming with the brand. We're just expanding like crazy, so. Great. Yeah. And tell us what, a little bit about yourself. What's your background? So, uh, my background is actually in communication and oh, okay. from Duquesne University and then um, I was just kind of unfulfilled, wanted to help in a different way, so I went back to school for nutrition um, and that's kind of where yeah. I'm at now. So. But you've had some great mentors uh, in, from the integrative medicine uh, field here in Pittsburgh. Yes. What's uh, one of your favorite uh, people? Well, about? Ted Civic, who, um, as you know, is a... Um, He's, I don't even know. I don't even know his title. He does so many things. I'm always amazed. Like right. one day I walk in and there's like something new and I'm like, what is this? Uh, but he, as a kid, he helps me with anxiety. I suffered from anxiety um, ever since I was probably first symptom showing in third and fourth grade. And really I had my first panic attack and was hospitalized in fifth grade. Wow. So... So you you really have lived this yeah. food mood thing. Oh yeah. We're not just talking about like when I was in the Navy, we said I'm in the mood for food. Yeah. This is no, bad. this is totally, this is totally different. different. Yeah, this is. So it, tell us what your <laughs> tell is, us what your mission is. What what do you teach? Well, this you know with junk foods and junk moods and this whole food and mood thing, it's really it was almost a borderline um, food addiction that I had in a sense where really heavily relying on food for any emotion to mask how I was feeling. So if I was sad, happy, you know whatever kind of energy or whatever type of feeling I had, I would turn to food. And so uh, eventually that took me down a long, windy road because I gained weight because I was got addicted to sugar at a very young age. And then that led to severe panic attacks. I'm sure all of the, the candies that I was eating had all these kind of food dyes in them that also was not good. So it kind of snowballed from there. And um, so now, you know, I'm really just passionate about helping people understand the emotional connection and that a lot of time it's more than just food alone. You know, it's it's the food, but then there's also the other element, this mind and, and spirit element. And I was lucky enough and fortunate enough, after my first panic attack in fifth grade, you know, I had a wake-up call. I know a lot of people have those spiritual realizations, but to have one at 11 years old that was like, you know, get your stuff together, Pretty Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, very young. And... Um, you know, we tried everything. We tried different therapies and, and nothing was really working for me. I wasn't really meshing with anyone that I worked with. And then that's when I found Ted. And because uh, my sister actually started going to the center and uh, she had a lot of the same issues. She was eight years older than me. And I saw this incredible shift in her. And I was like, I want that. Like I, here I am feeling these same things. Like I want that. And so I started working with him as a kid and just really shifted, shifted my life. So you're going to talk to us about uh, foods for the summer. Yeah. Good choices. And, and We're going to talk a little bit about a couple different things. Great. <laughs> That'll be one of them. But okay. um, today I kind of just wanted to share, I know as professionals in the field, you know, it's it's always one of those things that you, you all know a lot. <laughs> so there's not much of probably what I'm going to teach you that's so dramatically different. So I figured I would start with kind of sharing um, a story. At, I'm a storyteller. I like to tell stories. That's what I do. So I wanted to share kind of the junk food and junk mood story from a practitioner standpoint, because I think it's easy as professionals to kind of get down that a, a road of when you see people doing the wrong thing and you're just like, why do you keep doing that? You know what I mean? Um, so I kind of want to share that story of how junk foods and junk moods started and then, you know, give you some tips and answer any questions that you may have. Um, so this, this whole thing started, like I said, when I was 12 years old and diagnosed with anxiety, and I've been on this journey ever since. So I've really lived out this whole food and mood cycle. Um, but when I became, when I went back to school for nutrition and I decided that I wanted to help people, I became one of those really, really crazy judgmental, <laughs> judgmentals. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking so about? I'm going to talk about, an, there's nothing worse than an ex-smoker. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's exactly what it was. And right. it was like. So an ex-carnivore. Oh next my, junk food yep. junkie. Yeah. Oh yeah. My, I would go home and I would be like to my parents, oh my goodness, like as soon as I'd get there, I'd be like in their cabinets, like what are you eating? Do you not realize this is going to give you camp? Like all these things. Like I would just go on and on and on. 
And I, no one was listening to me. You know, everyone was like, you are crazy. Um, but I thought I was, I thought I knew everything. Yeah, exactly. But I thought I knew everything. I was like, oh, I got this, you know, and I, but I would just judge everyone. So I became this like really crazy judgmental health coach. And it wasn't until uh, this incident happened to me at an airport. So I was going actually to a nutrition conference and I was really, really excited. There was like 5,000 nutrition. Hello. Hey, Jess. There was going to be 5,000 nutrition experts at this conference. And so I'm like all jazzed up. I'm like, we're going to drink kale juice all day. Like <laughs> we're going to do yoga. It's going to be awesome. All these nutrition, they get it, you know? So I'm at the airport. I'm like, on a high already, like excited about this conference. And I got there because I'm a recovering type A perfectionist. I got there like two hours, you know, th maybe three hours early. And I sit down and I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to get started on some writing. So I opened my computer and there was this quiet little spot. There's like 10 tables. No one was sitting there. I was like, this is perfect. So I start writing. I look up. I failed to notice the employee only sign. So I was sitting in the employee section, but I was like, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all good. No one's going to catch me. All of a sudden, this woman comes out of the employee entrance, and she's on her cell phone, and she's just screaming. She's like, I hate my life. This place sucks. I hate everyone. And she's just going on and on and on. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is, and it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I don't need to deal with this right now. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. Get your stuff together. Like, come on. So she, she leaves, and I'm like, thank goodness. Like, she was, that's someone that was in a junk mood. You know what I mean? So I was like, ugh. Ten minutes go by. And this woman comes back except this time she had a tray full of food and of the other 10 tables where do you think she sat directly in front of me yep with her plate full of that delicious airport food <laughs> right <laughs> so here's this like crazy judgmental health coach mind that's like do I look at what she's eating or do I not do I like try to have peace with my day or do I like really kind of call her out and see what's going on here so of course my computer screen was kind of hiding her plate, but I'm like peeking around, trying to like get a glimpse at what she has. And at like seven in the morning, or I don't even know, I think it was five, it was even earlier than that. I think it was like 5.30. This woman had on her tray, and I couldn't make this story up if I tried. Seven or 7.30 in the morning, she had a large Ben and Jerry's chocolate milkshake with whipped cream on top. As if that wasn't enough, she had a large bowl of ice cream with whipped cream on top. So she had like two ice creams going on. Then she had a, some people are like, every time I tell a story, some people are like, I can deal with that. I'm like, oh, just wait. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. I promise you. You think that's good now, but it gets worse. So then she pulls out this styrofoam tray, and it has, like, a huge omelet on it, hash browns, like, all this stuff. And then she pulls, pull, gets a bottle of ketchup and pours it on, like, everything. Probably the milkshake, too. I don't even know. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, what is this woman doing? And so here I am, like, this is why people have a problem. Like, if they don't understand, like, what they're eating, how they're feeling. No wonder she's screaming at on the cell phone at someone that, you know, she's close with. No wonder why she hates her job and she's miserable and she's walking around here saying it. It's because she's eating this food and it's making her feel bad. So I'm like, okay, Lindsay, you don't want to get arrested in the airport, so just calm down. Like, it'll be okay. So I'm like, I'm just going to go back to writing about, like, kale and veggies and fruit smoothies and just, like, forget what she's doing. So then, like five minutes go by, 10 minutes go by, and I hear a shuffle. I'm like, do I look or don't I look? I don't know. So I hear it come shuffling around, and I'm like, ah, I have to look. So I like peek over. To my surprise, she pulls up a lunchbox cooler. I could not make this story up. I swear to you, I could not make it up. <laughs> this is why I wrote the book, it's because of this woman. So then, she pulls up this lunchbox cooler. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? More food? Really? Like, you just ate, and then I'm calculating it in my mind. You just ate 4,527 calories and, you know, 82 grams of sugar per, you know, whatever. And this is the, for the next 10 days. I'm just like going on. I'm like, what is she doing? So at like 7.35 in the airport, she unzips her cooler. And to my surprise, she pulls out five prescription medications. And one by one, she puts them down. So at this point, I'm like, are you kidding me? What are you, do you not know that those medications are exactly stemmed from what you're eating? Like, I'm sure you have a cholesterol, a blood pressure. You know, I'm going on and on and on in my mind. And I'm like, what is this, what is she doing? So I'm getting so frustrated, so upset. I like 
slam my computer down. I'm just like staring at her like it's on. Like I'm just like looking at and now she thinks I'm the crazy one, I'm sure. You know, here I am like going off in my mind. She's probably like, yeah, this woman's nuts. And I'm I'm literally physically, like I can feel it in my body how mad I am at this woman. So then like ten minutes goes by and I'm still like staring at her, seriously. She's she really thinks I'm nuts at this point. And then she pulls up her lunchbox cooler once again. I'm like, are you kidding me? And she starts to open it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Because she, she already had everything sitting out. She went, she was going to grab something else. I'm like, more food, more drugs. Like, what could, what could this woman possibly need at this point? A beer? <laughs> a beer? Yeah, exactly. That would just top a beer and a cigarette, right? That would just top it off. But I, I don't think you could do that in the airport. I don't know. I'd have to see it probably going through the security check. But I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Like, what is this woman doing? So... She pulls up her lunchbox cooler once again. And this is the moment that kind of shifted for me and changed the way I viewed food and, and pretty much enlightened me once again and sparked really my business and where, where I found the passion to help people is because she pulled up the lunchbox cooler and this time, you know, her, her kind of angry face turned to sadness and she just kind of sat there and she just pull, pushed her lunchbox tray and sat back in her seat like she was defeated, like the food had just won. She opens up her lunchbox cooler. She lifts up her shirt, rubs her stomach with alcohol, and injects herself with an insulin shot. And at this point, I went from being completely angry to so empathetic because I realized what I had just witnessed is what I could have became you know, suffering from anxiety and depression and using food as a coping mechanism to, to mask how I was feeling. Um, I could have been no different than her. The difference is that I was lucky enough to be given a second path, you know, to be shown a different way of living. And what if this woman never came encounter with that? And here I was judging her, doing nothing but for helping her. And so... I start crying in the middle of the airport. Now she really thinks I'm nuts. She's like, this person's looking at me like I'm so mad for like 30 minutes. Now she's crying. Like, what is going on? But um, because I just, I, there was just a shift that happened. And I realized that from then on, it was my mission to be um, just as real as possible, sharing experiences and helping people understand that it's it's a lot deeper than the outside than what we think when we see someone that's overweight and we want to judge them or we see someone that is um on all of these medications and we want to judge them for that or they're eating at mcdonald's you know what if what if they were never taught what we were and so how can we be that bridge to help those people in a different way and i chose to focus on the food and mood because it, of my own experiences and because i saw irrelevant from the people that I came in contact with. So this idea of emotional eating, stress eating, and choosing food um, as love, really, as a form of comfort to kind of fill a void. Uh, so that's kind of my, my introduction to junk foods and junk moods. Um, and in it, I, I really lay out this recipe, what I call it, to health and happiness, which is to think good thoughts, eat real food, love yourself, and repeat as necessary. Uh, because I think it's really easy to get off the bandwagon when you're going through those things. And I think that each one of those is such a crucial component. Because if you feel bad about yourself, you'll probably eat more because you don't care. And then you think poorly about yourself. And so you kind of hate yourself. If you think bad about yourself, um, you don't love yourself, which might cause you to eat. If you eat a lot and you gain weight and you don't feel good about yourself, then you don't think good about yourself. And so it's this cycle that I found that one of those elements was missing and it would affect the whole thing. And let's face it, we're imperfect people. So sometimes you jump, you know, you get off and you gotta repeat as necessary because sometimes you gotta like get yourself thrown back in on the right track. Um, so today I wanted to talk, I guess, and then we can open up for any questions, but about the eat real food part, since that's something that we discuss um, as far as summer foods. And I happen to have another book that I wrote called The Bliss Cleanse that focuses, um, it's basically junk foods and junk moods put into a cleanse. So it deals with emotional cleansing as well as physical cleansing um, as far as seasonal eating goes. All the recipes, um, it's basically an elimination diet. So 
it there's no wheat, um, no, no gluten, dairy, soy, any of that. Uh, d yeah, did I say dairy? Yeah, no gluten, dairy, soy, and no meat products. Um, but it does say if you start to feel and you need some people, you know, need meat to choose an organic, um, an organic meat product. Uh, but with that, we created seasonal eating lists, seasonal shopping lists. So I kind of just wanted to briefly talk about just with the summer, you know, it's getting hot out there. It, well, it was hot, then it got cool. Now it's a little hot. You know, Pittsburgh, you never yeah, know. You, you never know. You never know what you're going to well, get. the pirate season, it's going to be hot. Yeah. <laughs> the pirates are hot. Yeah. They're hot, so hopefully it'll stay hot, right? Um, but summer is really, we think, light and cooling, so your food should be that as well. Uh, it's harder to eat you know, root vegetables or really hearty things in the summer. Our bodies just don't naturally crave that. Um, so one of the things, uh, and I just wanted to share maybe two little recipes or tips that I had from that, um, and I'll hand out the recipes to you as well. But with, with the summer foods, cooling, um, kind of less is more. We tend to crave a lot less in the summer because our, we're kind of naturally outside and, and things like that. So two of the little recipes that I have are um, just very simple that you can make whenever you need just a cool down, a treat, and they're good for your mood too. So one of them is uh, simple raspberry bites. So you just take raspberries and you can put a um, chocolate chip on the inside of it and freeze them. And so it's great for kids too because just quick snack, but then they're kind of cooling and refreshing. And then you've probably seen this one before, but I just had them today, actually. I was gonna make them for here, but then they turned out kind of sloppy and I was a little embarrassed, so I didn't want to bring them. But they were, um, they're, we call them chunky monkey bites, where you just take a banana and make it, uh, cut it into little coins and then put peanut butter on it and then top it with a banana and then freeze them too. So that makes a nice little cooling summer treat. So I had those this afternoon. Um, and then with the peanut butter, you get the protein so the sugar's not causing your blood sugar to spike. Um, but yeah, really uh, just wanted to hit on the junk foods and junk moods, the importance of that. And I know we wanted to talk a little bit about the cooling foods, but I, I do have a sheet for everyone. So it talks about, um, and we could even give this to you to put online. Yeah, we'll put it up uh, um, with the uh, video online. Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. Cause there's summer food. So it goes over all different summer foods, how to eat with the seasons. And then when you do eat with the seasons, what to think of. Sure, yeah, um, that'd be great to put up. So, awesome. yeah. Got any, any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Jan just joined us. Thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. Well, I really appreciate. Uh, just to reiterate, your your two books are the Bliss Cleanse. Yeah. And the junk junk Just foods things. and junk moods, and they can find you at foodmoodgirl.com. Yeah, foodmoodgirl.com, and I'm on social media and all that. Tell fun me stuff. how it, how well is all this message being received by your clients? How, oh. how do people take? This? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's very, it's been very, very well received. I've been um, very blessed with the work that I've been doing. Um, it's also very. It's up and coming, the whole concept of food and mood. You know, I got into it when not a lot of people were talking about it. People are talking about it now, but it's still a really fresh topic. Um, and client-wise, I mean, it's just incredible to see the subtle shifts in people's life when they realize that there's other things that were maybe hindering them. For example, one of my success stories, it was actually just on WTAE, was a man named Jim Zanetti from West Mifflin. and. He weighed over 600 pounds. And most people look at someone that's 600 pounds and say, well, you did this to yourself. You know, in a sense, yes, he did that to himself. But when you hear the backstory of it, it makes sense. He um, was a very hard worker, very, he worked for the mill, then started his own business working. Uh, he actually was a former addict um, and he got clean and then he started working. So work was his new, his new vice. And he loved working, was passionate about what he did, started a business, and then it was a painting business, and he fell. And he hurt his knee, so he was off work for about, they told him, six to eight months. Well, in that time, he couldn't do anything. He felt helpless. He felt like he had no purpose anymore. And he turned to food to kind of help him cope through that. And, you know, years later, 10, 15, 20 years later, just day by day making those choices, um, you know, unhealthy choices to, you know, 
mask how he was feeling led him to be over 600 pounds. And when we started working together, you know, just, just very depressed, very reliant on certain things heavily. And um, he's since lost about 200, so he's down to 400 pounds. Um, and he's just like, well, he told me, he's like, if I can do it, anyone can, you know, because I was heavily addicted to food. It's not even about, you know, food and mood, like, oh, I'm sad, I want a candy. It's like, no, this is someone that fully every day woke up thinking, how can I get my next fix of X, Y, Z, whatever it happened to be. Um, so with that, you know, that's an extreme case. Um, but I think that shows a lot because what's going on in someone's life that is causing them to do this? And for a lot of people, it is a sense of purpose, even addiction. I know um, coming from a family of addicts, including my dad, who I was telling you a little bit about, um, when he uh, was going through his cancer treatments, he went back to drinking. And it's like, you know, he knew cancer, you know, you should not drink, but he lost the sense of himself and he lost weight. And so he didn't feel like he was even his own person anymore. And so how do we help these people when they're going through these things? Cause those emotional issues um, can lead people down this road. So. Well, I think you're doing great work. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, too. I appreciate. Thanks everyone right. too Thank for you. having me. Appreciate it. Thanks.